Welcome to module 29 of object oriented analysis and design. We have been discussing about UML diagrams and we have already introduced the use case diagram which is critical for the requirements phase and we have introduced the class diagram which is the most used structural diagram in the UML diagram set. In the present module, we will talk about sequence diagram which is one of the behavioral diagrams specifically categorized as an interaction diagram. This discussion will uh, span the current module as well as the next module. So, while introducing uh, the sequence diagram, we will talk about the lifeline and messages and uh, discuss examples in that context. And in the next module, we will talk about the interaction fragments and some more examples. Before we get uh, started in terms of what is uh, a sequence diagram, I would like to remind you of the basic computing model. We have been talking about the structural aspect of it, but now we want to talk about the behavior or the execution aspect of that. So, Please uh, be reminded that uh, we have in the final model of our computation, we have several objects. So, objects exist in the system, say these are different objects and these are the, this you can think of as a, as a time. So, objects exist on that time and then they exchange messages between themselves that one object may send some message to another object may receive a message from a object and when you get a message you perform certain computation that is the computation associated with the particular operation which has been requested through the message. If you recall this was the basic client server model. So, sequence diagram is a is a first level by where we try to capture this behavior of the services provided by the object and how messages request for certain service and how that service is responded to. So, we are going closer to uh, realizing or representing the actual client server version of the system that we are designing. Now, uh, these are uh, the the different places where the sequence diagram, I am sorry, uh, the sequence diagram can occur, it they can occur in the uh, analysis phase as we have already seen. They can occur also in the, they can also occur in the design phase as a behavioral model. So, these are the two places, they start uh, featuring from the analysis uh, a phase where we first try to capture the dynamic behavior of the objects and in the design phase certainly we would like to refine them more. Now, coming to what is a sequence diagram as I already mentioned it is a most common kind of uh, interaction diagram which focus on the message interchange between a number of lifelines. So, these are the two key ideas concepts that we will try to introduce and detail out on the sequence diagram. It is a behavioral diagram as you know and it tries to depict and this is the basic client server model. So, it tries to depict the inter object behavior of the system and it is ordered by time. This is very very critical and that is why often we say this is a temporal interaction diagram. So, it tells you in the order of time how things happen and when we talk about time here we will see often that the time is not actually a clock that is time may not mean that uh, so much specific so many seconds so many minutes or hour has to uh, elapse between two happenings two events, but certainly it emphasizes in the order in which things should happen. For example, if I want to check mail, then certainly I cannot do that without uh, launching the browser. Now, after launching the browser, I need to find the URL of the Gmail. 
only after I have found the URL of the Gmail, I can put in my login request. Once I have put in the login request, it has to get authenticated by the login server. Once this is authenticated, then my inbox will be shown. So, these uh, series of things that we regularly do in terms of checking an email is a specific illustration of a of what a sequence diagram tries, tries to capture. So, this is the time sequence. So, there is no specific time given between launching of the browser and the browser actually showing uh, a page or in terms of requesting a URL and actually getting that uh, uh, login page for the Gmail and so on, but the temporal ordering is most important. There are three major components of a sequence diagram lifeline messages and interaction fragments. So, first uh, let us look at a lifeline. Lifeline is uh, the basic concept of a lifeline is uh, ev every lifeline represents an object, an object in existence. So, lifeline is basically the time through which the object lives in the system. So, that is uh, generically defined as an individual participant in the interaction and it represents only one interaction entity. So, if we if we have a collection of them, then I must use some kind of a selector to select which particular one I am talking about from the collection. Uh, lifeline uh, is shown by a head, which has the typically the name the and then it has a dotted dashed line that uh, goes below the vertical line and the sense of time on that line goes from top to bottom is the advancing time. So, this is where the object has started living and it continues till the object is annihilated. So, let us uh, start taking uh, uh, examples and we will be able to see. So, here this is this is a lifeline of data of class talk. So, this uh, notation is again uh, important to note this is the name of a class and uh, when I proceed that with another uh, identifier uh, with a colon separator, then this means this is the object, so, this is an instance of the class, this is a class. So, data colon colon stock here in terms of the class uh, uh, diagram and in terms of the sequence diagram the UML in general would mean that data is an object of the type class. So, as I said the lifeline will belong to an object, so this is the object and this is its lifeline, this is the advancing time. The second one uh, here is uh, an anonymous uh, lifeline, here we have just have the class name, but there is no object name given. So, the name of the object is not specified. So, this is called the anonymous object or anonymous lifeline. We could write something like this as well, where certainly this is the class and this whole thing is the object, but just note the array like notation being used here. So, here possibly there are several objects of the same type and we are using a selector, this is the selector, selector k to specify which of these objects is participating in this interaction. So, these are the typical uh, lifelines that will be involved in a sequence diagram. And uh, in all this uh, um, uh, actually I should go back all these are these are called the named uh, entities the these are the different named entities in the UML. So, you have a specific name for the even class is a named entity we may have names for the uh, lifelines as well. So, these are some of the uh, named elements entities of the LMS. So, it could be so here it says that E 1 is an object of employee. So, E 1 is a specific employee, E 2 is another specific employee, L 2 is a specific leave and so on and there could be the lifelines would run from these objects. Now, coming to messages, the message is an element that defines one specific uh, uh, kind of communication between lifelines of an interaction. So, it is usually a message will be between two lifelines most cases and they are categorized according to two broad classes, two major types. One is by the action type that is 
what does what kind of role the message envisage is to achieve and other is by the presence of events that the message certainly a message is something that an object sends to another object in the generic form of the client server model. So, a message usually will need to have a send event which initiates sending of the message and will need to have a receive event which is the receiving of the message. So, if we classify messages according to the presence or absence of these events, then the classification is called the messages by presence of events. So, we will take a look into each one of these types of messages, what are the different uh, varieties that exist in every case. So, if we go by action type, then various types of messages under the action type are these synchronous call, asynchronous call a signal, create message, delete message, reply message. So, these are the different kinds of messages that are allowed in a sequence diagram. So, this is a synchronous call. So, you can uh, the uh, let me just explain the basic concept. So, there is a object here, there is another interacting object here and uh, this is this means something is in execution, some method of the object is in execution. So, you send a message say the search message uh, to this particular interacting object and as you send that the search method or the search operation in the online bookshop object gets activated. So, that starts executing. You do a similar thing here as well, here there is a service object, there is a task object. You can note that in all these cases the objects are basically anonymous and you are executing some method of service, you send a message to task which is a start message. So, basically the start operation in task will start executing that is a basic structure of sending a message. Now, you do note that there is a difference in the arrowhead, which gives the difference in terms of their basic behavior. We say this is if the arrowhead is filled up, we say this is a synchronous call, which means that once the request has been sent, the requesting object that is this particular method which was executing will be put on hold till this requested operation is completed and that response comes back some way to indicate that this has completed. So, between the requester and the requested only one will work at a time when the requester has sent the request then this is executing this is on hold at this point and only when this has completed this will start executing again that is synchronous. Asynchronous is where the requester sends the request, this is initiated, this continues, but requester also keeps on continuing, requester does not stop. So, requester send that task, just do that task. I, 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 I tell somebody that this is a letter, please go to the post office and deposit that letter, send that letter, but after sending that person, I continue with my own work. So, that is an asynchronous call, because there it is not the execution of one here is not dependent on the other. Here the execution is dependent because till it completes the execution this cannot start further. So, this is one of the key ideas key properties of a message that you must identify when you are modeling as to do you want it need it synchronized or you need it asynchronous. Of the other types these are various you know certainly the basic hygiene kind of messages as I say this is a create message. So, you will need to create objects uh, at different points of time. So, you uh, this is designated by a dashed uh, arrow with the arrow head and the head of it is not an execution box, but is an object itself. So, this says online bookshop is now creating an account. So, this is called a create message. Similarly, and this account exists an online bookstore is sending a message you can see the name of the message is destroy, which does invoke I mean if you know C plus plus Java it invokes the destructor and the object eventually is destroyed. So, beyond this there is no lifetime for this object nothing exists after this. This object has was created here and is terminated at this point. So, this is known as a delete message. So, that is the basic object creation and destruction that we will need to happen. 
So, we have seen synchronous asynchronous create delete the only other message that is important is a reply or response message which may be sent it is uh, uh, in many cases it is optional it is typically shown with the dotted uh, line and with the open arrow. So, a web client sent a search request to the online bookshop and online bookshop in return has sent a reply. So, this is a reply message or it is often called a response message also. Now, it is uh, not that uh, always there will be a response certainly for example, for an asynchronous call the reply message may not be there because the requester is already executing in some other state, but in a synchronous call you will need a response message because you remember that the requester who at the center of the message is waiting for the requested task to be completed and therefore, that completion will have to be reported in terms of a reply message. So, these are the major uh, um, uh, types of uh, uh, messages in terms of the actions that they perform. In terms of the events uh, as I said that uh, most uh, messages are complete message that they have a send event and a receive event. So, a request has been made and by reply this has been uh, this has been completed in, in terms of that. So, uh, when I send a message this is the point where I am doing the send. So, I have a send event at this and when the message is received by the receiver I have a receive event at this. So, normally a complete message would mean that one that has been sent by the send event and that has been received by the receiver. So, because you would expect that why are you doing messages because you want to interact. So, in the interaction there will have to be a sender then there will have to be a recipient that has to be received. So, if that is satisfied then we say we have a complete message, but there could be lost messages or found messages as we will see the lost message is one where you have just the send you do not have a receive or a found where you just have the receive you do not have a send. And you could have unknown messages where both the send and receive events are not known. So, that is a that is kind of the default, but certainly in a diagram in a sequence diagram unknown messages uh, usually would not mean anything and you should not have them. So, in terms of uh, the two special kind of messages the lost and found lost message is one where the request was sent. That so, here the send event uh, happened, but it never reached anybody the which is very typical when we go to web search and all that we just send the request and it does not reach the web browser it gets lost dropped in the whole process. And we denote that in terms of this uh, big black dot. So, this says that the receive message receive event was not there. On the other hand it could be found messages that uh, the online bookstore gets a search request. So, this is the receive event it has received that, but there is no identified sender on the other side it does not know where did it come from. So, the send event is not known. So, you say lost in comparison to lost you say this is a found message. So, these are these are possible uh, message uh, ones in terms of presence of events, but certainly uh, we would uh, we would primarily work with complete messages which have both the send as well as receive events. So, this is uh, this is just for you to see and get familiar with different uh, messages. So, you can you can see here there is a lot of red in this diagram let me use green blue. So, you can see here so you can say that uh, this window object is sending a validate message to the comments object and what kind of message is this? This is on one side a synchronous call message because you have a what kind of uh, by presence of event this is a complete message you have both the send as well as the receive. So, you can see different uh, such types uh, for example, here creates. So, you have a create message which is creating the proxy the comments is creating the proxy. So, you have a create message the new life line starts 
there was an existing lifeline of a servlet and a message has been sent to do some tasks which failed and because of that the object is destructed. So, this is a delete message that you have in place. Uh, you have a reply message here, a reply message here. There are, there are several other annotations, please do not get worried about them, we will uh, slowly introduce those. And if you particularly look at uh, this message being sent from comments to proxy after this was a create, this was a create and this Ajax message being sent from the comments to proxy, you can see this is again a call message, but this is an asynchronous call. So, after sending this, the comments will continue to work when this execution starts. So, these are the different kinds of uh, messages, just illustration of the notation that you could think of. So, we could go through uh, some examples quickly. For example, I want to do a login, how do I model that? Certainly, here is the initiating, this is. So, here is our person who is initiating who wants to do the login. So, the corresponding uh, object sends a login request and within uh, parenthesis what we write are known as message parameters. The message could have parameters that it carries. Certainly, if you are to log in, you need to specify the user ID and the password and the message is sent to the GUI, because that is where we write down the user ID password. right? So, the message is sent to this. The message is synchronous, because unless the login is completed, I cannot do anything else. Next, uh, the GUI what it will do? It will need to discuss or consult the session manager of the particular session as to, to check if you are already logged in, if you are in the session, if your login is valid. So, it sends in turn it sends a verify login message to the session manager, this again is synchronous. So, which means that when this message is this verify login uh, message is uh, received at, at this point at this receive event, then this as well as this both of them are hold on hold in execution, they are not executing. Now, the session uh, manager has to check that. So, the session manager looks at the customer uh, database to check if the user exists. So, it does a sense a get user details and sends the user ID again in a synchronous manner till it gets a response of the user details. So, this in this part of execution in the customer object or which is basically a customer store. So, this is the customer class and uh, a customer is a say as if the name of the customer or the particular customer object. So, the customers based on the user ID, the user details are returned. So, once uh, the session manager gets the user details, so it knows the password that has been given that has come from this message. It has got the user details, so it has got the password of the user as present in the system. So, at this point it has the password from this side, it has a password from the database. So, now it has to verify that whether they are same. So, that is verifying the login again, but this message interestingly as you can see is a self message that is uh, the session manager actually sends the message to itself and this uh, smaller one denotes the verify login as a self message, because it is it is important to verify that, because passwords normally are not kept in the way uh, they are typed, they are kept in some encrypted form. So, the the password that you have got that needs to be encrypted and then it is to be compared with this encryption and so on. So, that is the verify login. So, you can see that the session manager on one got the verify message from the login GUI and the other it gets a verify login again from itself and it computes and all of these are, are synchronous, because this whole process has to go in step by step one, one step after the other. And after this has been done at this point, what will you have? You will have either the login is successful, the password has matched or the it did not match. So, you have a branching. So, this is how this typically you will write branching, there are other ways of noting that. So, you say if a customer invalid, then you will do a response message, which is login failure message. You say that the login is not did not go through. Else, 
you sent a login success message. So, you can see there are two messages that go back from the session manager to the GUI. Both of them are of both of these are of reply message kind because you are responding back this is a reply message type, but only one of them can be sent depending on what happened in the execution is it valid login or is it invalid login. Whichever comes across then based on that the logged in information is given back to the person you either say that you are logged in or you will say that your login has failed. So, this is a just a simple uh, uh, sequence diagram to show that the typical way we log in how that can be represented in terms of the different lifelines and messages that pass between them. I have another illustration here which I will uh, leave for your uh, own analysis and understanding it is uh, on the similar line. So, if the person has already logged in and uh, as if this is basically some kind of an online store. So, one after login the person wants to place an order. So, the person is here the GUI where the products can be seen the session manager is there the shopping cart where we collect the items that we have selected is there the specific cart items are there. Then we have the order in which once we have done the collection in the shopping cart we would like to actually place the order and the customer. So, these are the different objects which participate in this and uh, these are the different messages that uh, go through them. So, please uh, go through uh, this uh, diagram you can see there are several several of them are actually synchronous calls actually all of these are synchronous calls because in the in the shopping process uh, online purchase process of any kind certainly things will have to go step by step and only one one once one step is done completed the next step can happen. So, that is a synchronous situation broadly there are several like uh, card item or calculate price which are self messages which uh, you can use and then finally, you have the order confirmation notification that comes back to the person. So, I would request that you uh, carefully go through each and every message and try to map it to your own experience of having purchased anything uh, from the online uh, store and you will find that how we are representing those behavioral aspects of the process in terms of the sequence diagram. There is yet another example this is uh, uh, as if you are uh, doing a Facebook authentication. So, this part this is the web browser through which you are working this application uh, this is a Facebook's authentication server and this is the Facebook's content server. So, the idea is uh, working from the browser you have to first uh, approach the Facebook application then the Facebook application whether you can access that depends on the what the authentication server will tell us and once you are authenticated then you can actually access the content from the Facebook content server. So, these are the four major objects or four major timelines that participate in accessing an element in the Facebook and uh, the if you if you again similarly look carefully at this part this is mostly synchronized message and response which uh, consults the authentication server through the application to validate if you have permission for access. And once you have permission for access then you do this part which is actually accessing the content. So, your requests are going till up to the content server. So, again again you read through these uh, sequence of messages and try to understand how this is uh, happening and try to understand in depth because if you understand couple of these sequence diagrams uh, in terms of your personal experience because uh, I am trying to pick up uh, you know examples which uh, I believe that uh, most of you who are attending this course would have personally experienced either purchasing something online or accessing certain message certain photo certain uh, video on the Facebook. So, these are the typical kinds of sequence success that we will need to go through and this is how they can be modeled. So, there are there is of course, a final part where the permission is not there. So, you do not actually in this part below the dotted line below the dotted line here you do not actually are able to go up to the content server and access the content because your permission has been denied. So, uh, that is uh, mostly about the uh, um, lifeline and messages and if in view of this if we look into the LMS then our typical message would be a request leave message or a approve leave message. 
so it will come from an employee to the leaf and then we will have to see what should be the different processing that should happen. So, I will leave it as an exercise to you to think over as to what should be the basic sequence diagram structure for a request leave or a approved leave that we have uh, discussed for the LMS system. In summary, we have uh, introduced uh, sequence diagram to capture the basic interaction of uh, uh, different uh, objects and uh, their behavior under the client server model. We have uh, explained the modeling of objects lifetime in terms of lifeline components and discussed about the various messages, different kinds of uh, synchronous and asynchronous. These are the two key kinds of messages and the response. These are the three key types of messages which we will need most of the time to deal with any situation of dynamic behavior besides the create and delete messages. So, please uh, um, I, I will urge that uh, you please uh, try to go through the example diagrams that we have shown and try to become confident about understanding the lifeline and messages before you take up this next module where we will talk about the interaction fragments and further on the LMS example.